Okay, time for a bit of time traveling. So, there's a lot more dirt on this ox locker. I think it's time to finally hook it up, eh? Now that we have onboard air. <laughs> okay, so in the one box we have our airline, we have our cover, cover bolts, uh, our electric uh, air solenoid kit, and it also came with some fittings and some instructions. And now for the main business. So, over here we have the ox locker itself with our little shifty gear thing. Alright, so I just wanted to take a look inside the, uh, the ox locker air solenoid kit. So this takes your electric actuated uh, locker and makes it pseudo electric. So you can use yourself an electric switch to turn on this solenoid, this uh, valve, and then that is what will send the air to the locker. So here's the diagram we have here. Looks pretty simple. One is our supply. So for some reason the diagram's a little backwards here. So our supply air goes in here. And then the part that goes, the output to the locker goes on two. And then one of these wires gets grounded. I don't know if it actually matters. Since it might just be a coil. And then the other one gets 12 volt power, which comes from the switch. Now this thing says it is 12 volts and 5.4 watts. So, what's that, like half an amp-ish? So a switch should be able to hold that, considering this thing says it's good for 20 amps. So we don't need a relay for that, which is good. Since this basically is a relay, I think all we're doing is turning the coil on and off. Now we get two fittings over here. So these go to our airlines. And then I don't know what the heck that's for. It's some kind of union. Yeah, I don't know what the heck that's for. But we have it. Interesting. Unless it goes into three. I don't know what the heck three would be used for. So that's what you get in that kit. Basically a saw and some fittings. Alright, so next up, we're going to look at what comes with the air shifter. Uh, the, just the standard air shift kit uh, when you order from Ox. So you get yourself your, uh, your cover. I don't know if there's any mods that are done to this for uh, air. I think all the newer ones can support air, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. But you come with a bunch of uh, tube. And you get this little kit over here. So we have our Ox Air Shifter installation. And I tell you what, this is a great picture. This is a good diagram. Real simple. So we got our cover fitting and our 90 degree fitting over here. Okay, so this goes into the cover. And then we have our 90 degree. It's got a little o-ring on there, so it'll seal on there. And then this is just some kind of press fit thing. I, I guess that's enough to just hold that bastard in place. I don't know. And then, after that, it'll go through our air tube and into the straight fitting. So our straight fitting is what goes into this air switch, and it gets another 90 degree out for wherever. Okay? So you get your input air over here, goes through the switch, into this little guy, through all your tube, into the cover. Now this is pretty cool, because this is a mechanical switch, but it still looks like an electric switch. So you can see which way's in, which way's out. From the Red Dot Corporation, Seattle, Washington. Interesting. It's even marked in there. Cool. So that's actually really neat. So if you want it to look like a switch, you still get the switch, but it's all mechanical. That's actually really clever. I didn't know that the kit came with that. I didn't really look into it that much. Okay, so that means that the only thing this solenoid thing does is it helps us retain our electrical wires. So uh, the, the only good thing is we don't have to run an airline all the way into the cab. Where we need it, we can still use our, our nice bendy wires and put them wherever. So that saves us on our, our tube length. So, you know, this was still kind of necessary, but this is really cool. If, if you felt like, you know, just running an airline into your car, that's, that's awesome. 
So props, props to that. That's that's actually pretty cool. Okay, so combining both the kits together, we get something like this. So we're still going to use our differential housing and 90 degree adapter from the original kit, but instead of all the switch nonsense, we're going to use uh, the solenoid stuff instead. Two is our output, one is our input, so this just has to go to a 80 to 120 psi uh, source, and you're good to go. So that's the uh, next part we need to figure out is our source. So these little uh, quick connect fittings are actually really cool. So if you notice, you can press down on them, and I'm sure that actuates something inside this little doohicker. But it's cool. You just, you just push the tube in, and what happens is when you push the tube, it pushes this guy in, and then when we release, it expands, and now it's in there. Like, it's it's solid. I didn't think that, because when I saw the uh, like the install video, it just looked like you just kind of pushed it in there, and I'm like, really? That's going to hold it? But after messing with these firsthand, these seem like they could work. It's nice. There's no, you know, don't have to worry about any compression fittings or any bullshit like that. You just pop it in there, and you're good to go. This is kind of cool. <laughs> I dig. The final thing is to button her up put the cover on there. So, the kit comes with new bolts and the new cover. Sweet. And if you love yourself and you want to make things easy in the long run, get yourself a gasket. Fuck all that RTV bullshit. Yeah, I know. Everyone told me to get a lube blocker, but I don't care. You can reuse these a couple times too if you're careful. So, I use a little uh, sandpaper stuff. Uh, whatever the hell that. This stuff. I use some of that to clean up the surfs. Get all the rust out of there. I also use this guy, a little blade scraper. That helps pretty well. But uh, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Put the gasket on, put this guy on, put the bolts on, and go to town. The only thing you gotta do is make sure that your shift fork aligns with the shifter difter over here. That's it. Okay? This might be uh, two-handed work. But yeah. Okay, okay. But what's what's the issue? What's the matter, huh? Did somebody make fun of you? Huh? Did they call you names? What's the matter, buddy? Why don't you want to fucking go in? I really hope there's not like a clearance issue or something. Uh, come on. I even tried putting Earl on there and everything. Uh. Well, you see we're good on the bottom at least. Huh. So we might have some uh, clearance issues on the uh, the top. Alright, we can put a little sharpie on there and then beat it in and see if the sharpie gets messed up. Well, pulling the cover, it becomes pretty obvious pretty quick what the heck our issue is. It's got to be hitting right there. Are you fucking kidding me? What is this shit? Okay, so we got two options. We either grind down the how, um, like the shifter here, or we have to grind that out. If we knew about this clearance issue from the very beginning, I'd say, all right, let's fuck around with the housing. But I don't want to get a ton of metal shavings and everything. There's no way in hell I'm taking this thing apart again. So, fuck it. It covers a lot cheaper than a diff is. We're gonna grind this fucker down until she fits. So here's the Sharpie report. It looks like we just need to take a little nibble right out of the top. I don't know if you can see that. That's not reflection, that's silver. Oh, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. That was a quick fix. Yay, it fits. Okay. Come with me. All right, so all I did was take a little flappy disc and gave her the business on the top end, made her nice and shiny, and she fits. All right, that's all we need. Final little brake clean to get some dusties out of here. And then we can seal it up. Oh yeah, yeah, Christ almighty. Finally, cover's on. Luckily all I had to do was shave that little bit. She's good. Don't forget the protective cover. Eh. Damn, that's a that's a good sticker there. Jesus. Beauty. And that's reflective too. So, back on to this kit. Alright, pretty simple. So we got this guy which screws into the cover. And then uh, we'll use a little right angle dealio to come out of the cover. These are, uh, you know, quick connect fittings. So you literally just press the line on there and it sticks. And then we'll run that somewhere up into the cab. And uh, up to this. I'm going to mount all this inside 
I don't know if it's waterproof or not, but I don't want to find out. So we'll mount this guy inside and uh, then we'll just run a fitting into here. So in order to um, fit with this, this is a Viair tank, uh, two gallon. All the fittings are a quarter inch NPT. Uh, all the fittings that are supplied here are eighth inch NTP, so you will need an adapter. Luckily, you can buy one of the kits that they sell, one of the uh, the fitting kits, for an, uh, an airlocker thing. And it actually comes with a quarter inch to an eighth inch NPT adapter. So what we can do is screw these two together and then put that in the tank and we're good to go. So this is really simple. We just cut the tube in half, one run side to the cover, the other side of the tank, solenoid sits in the middle. Ta -da! So uh, that cover actually does really well for what it is. It kept the hole quite clean. So I doubt that they, uh, they <laughs> designed it too much with uh, keeping that on long term, but it does stay on. So thank you guys for supplying something that fits well. Seriously, a good product. It's all about the little details and stuff like that is important. So anyway, put that guy in there to 15 foot-pounds. It's got an O-ring to seal. Did you say seal? And then we'll put our right angle fitting in and run our airline. Once I'm not retarded. Get the friggin' air. Okay, so just like that, she slides right in. And check this out, you can even rotate it. Neat. So that is a three-quarter inch nut. And then this, I don't know, I just used a uh, one of them regular adjustable wrenches. So, you take your airline and you literally make sure the tip's clean and it's cut straight, but you just take the thing and push it in there. And then when you pull, it doesn't come out. Look at that. If you want to remove it, you push down on the uh, that little blue thingy. It might be a two handed job, but it pops right back out again. It's, it's a really cool thing. They're really, really nice. So then we can just take that, rotate it up and follow it up to uh, wherever we want it to enter inside the vehicle. So make sure that you keep it away from, you know, lines and things that rub and bounce. Like you can see my uh, my truss is hitting the exhaust over there, but just keep in mind that, you know, the suspension moves up and down and all around. So make sure that you leave a little slack and it's not rubbing against shit. So I guess we're gonna have to find a hole that goes on inside and uh, should be good to go. So here's our current plan. We got it going up, over, on top of the gas tank, and uh, actually running through my bracket up here. So it's going through that side, popping out the top, and then I actually cut a hole into the um, this grommet over here, and it's going to go into there. So that's our entrance point. And how do you get that from inside the vehicle? Well, you gotta take this cover off, which is fun. Pain in the ass. Okay, so it is gonna enter down on the bottom right there. And if you have tiny hands, you can snake it in there to try to grab the tube and pull it through. So I'm gonna have mine enter under the cover here. And uh, it'll probably go to a port over on this side. Okay, so now that we have this inside the vehicle, we can figure out our other port that goes into the tank and uh, the solenoid. Cool. So now comes the fun part of undoing all the stuff I did before. So for my e-locker, obviously I had the wires run all the way down the frame rail to the back into the locker. Uh, but now, since our uh, power has been moved to inside the cab, it'd make more sense to run it inside the vehicle. So I'm gonna undo all that wiring and uh, we're just gonna run it inside the vehicle and down the... Um, down the inside instead. Okay, so that was fun. So we have all the wires running, tucked, and that'll go all the way down here. Do, 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 do. And I have it coming out right there. Beautiful. Okay, so now we have the power wires for our solenoid. We have our airline to the locker, and they all meet up perfectly right next to our tank. Cool. So now we just find a good spot where we can smack dab that in the middle, wire it up, good to go. Just make sure you get your numbers right. Um, I think one, one is for what, the tank? Yeah, one is for the supply and two is for the locker. So just make sure it's oriented right. So 
will be looking like that. Wire it up, mount it, done. Woohoo! Okay. And when you're done, you might have something that looks like this. So, I snipped the uh, the line on both sides, so this is hanging in there. I didn't solder these yet because I just want to test and make sure everything works. Because, you know, it's always important to test things, right? Alright, so I know I didn't get to uh, talk about the switches since they were already pre-installed, but it is fairly simple. If you look at the diagram, it gives you a pinout of uh, what all the tabs are. You get a ground, you get a power, and you get a light or whatever. Uh, so yeah, just check out the um, the diagram for that. The ground, I just have grounded somewhere under here. There's a, uh, a screw that I found that had a good connection, so it's just got a little eyelid in there. And good to go. Um, so where do you get power? Well, it depends what you want your switch to do. For me, I was lazy, and I just ran it to 12 volt hot, so it's always on, even though it doesn't need to be. Um, if you want it to be a bit more fancy, then run it to ignition. And uh, that way it only turns on when the keen's on. So for that, you can go inside your little fuse box down here and uh, find yourself something that comes on with the ignition. You can see I've got a couple lines, like that yellow one, that red one, that white one. Um, maybe not the white one, I don't remember. But yeah, you just find one that is on with the ignition and off when the car's off. And then you have an ignition one. And uh, for extra safety... You can put a fuse in there, that way you don't blow anything up. Uh, this one, uh, since this is all my Eaton E-Locker stuff, it actually is fused and all that stuff, so those blue wires are feeding my lockers. And then I got a nice, like an actual nice proper harness done with the relays uh, somewhere down there, there, to the right. So yeah, they're all relayed and fused, but you know, for this you don't need a relay. Like I said, it's, it doesn't really use that much power. But yeah, just... Uh, Find a way to fish that in there for me. I actually have this run through here, and I cut out that panel for them to fit. So, uh, yeah. If you want to see more on the wiring, I actually have an entire video dedicated to wiring up the e-lockers. So go check that out if you want to see more detail, but that's the basics. Okay, so all the fittings are tight. Everything is on here, and um, my leader hose isn't here yet, so I can't hook up the pump the way I want to. But we can do it bootleg like this. So, we have uh, just an airline that goes to the pump, like so, and uh, if we turn it on, we should get air. Ready? Oh, look at that. It's climbing. Uh, probably be helpful if you could see it, huh? I forget what the shutoff is. But the pump should shut off on its own, so we don't need a, a switch. But if your pump doesn't shut off, if it's just a regular one, then you'll need a cutoff switch. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool. So the tank has an auto shut off at 150. Lordy. So now that our tank's at pressure, uh, I guess part two would be to turn on the solenoid and see what happens. So it should be the rear locker, so it's this switch. Hey, I heard a little... blew up. Hmm, well I guess we should jack up one of the tires and see if the locker locked. Okay, so this tire is jacked up and transmission is in neutral. We got roly polies. And... Oh snap, dude! Yes! It works! Oh, that is so cool! Dude, I love when shit just works, man. That is awesome. Uh, other thing, the solenoid has a blow-off or, I guess, a vent in it. So, when we turn the switch off... Now, she unlocks. Dude, oh, that's so cool. Oh, man, this is awesome. This is so cool. So, yeah, we can, we can fill up the, the tank. And, uh... Yeah, just have air for the trail. Oh, man. All right, I guess we can solder those wires up and make this official. Finally. Wires have been soldered, heat shrunk, zip tied, and they're going to be wire loomed as well. So there you go. I think that about does it. 
So the locker has been wired up. Cool. And we got a fancy air uh, set up out of it. Okay, so now all the fittings are tight and we test it and it holds air, so cool. There we go. That is how we install our uh, onboard air tank and put in our fittings. So now, uh, after this trip, we find out how well it does, make sure the window doesn't blow out. Uh, we'll have to hook the pump up. Cool. Okay, so spoiler alert, we're back. So it worked. I had to do some bootleg stuff and charge the uh, the tank up so that I could actually use it for that trip, but uh, you know, it works. Uh, when the pump is finally installed, it still works pretty good, but there is one downfall. There is an initial waiting period, obviously. You have to charge the pump, you have to fill up the tank, and uh, if you were a goofball and forgot to fill the tank before you got to a trail, well, now you're kind of sitting there with your hands in your lap for, you know, a good minute and a half, two minutes while you wait for the pump to uh, fill the tank up. So that kind of sucks, especially if you're stuck and you're, you know, just sitting there waiting for the thing to go. Um, so if you don't need an onboard tank or anything like that, if you're only running the locker off the pump, it'd be a lot easier to just run it off the pump. Because I've seen a few people that have a, a setup like that. You turn the pump on for literally less than five seconds and it's energized and ready to go. That's pretty cool. It just flicks on and off when it needs and you don't have to worry about it. So this is cool if you need a tank and all that stuff. But if you don't, I'd highly recommend skipping this and just running it off a pump. It's it's so much quicker. You don't have to think about it. You just flick it on. All right, we're good. There you go. But it works. It works well. And I'm very happy with the aux kit. So that's cool. We've now got air lockers. And the fact that it unlocks and locks instantly is great. The biggest downfall of the E&E locker is just how long it takes to spool up. Because you have to spin the entire assembly. Like, uh, I forget like if it's a half turn or a whole turn or whatever. But... It's not as bad when you're waiting for it to lock, because you just wait for the one wheel to spin until it locks. But when you're trying to unlock it, that sucks. When you're trying to go downhill, and you got to make a tight turn at the same time, and that fucker won't unlock on you. Ooh, what a pain in the ass that is, fighting it the whole time. So the ox, oh, it's great. A little flip the switch, boom. Good to go. Back to open. Very happy with the ox. So if you're thinking about a kit, that might be the way to go.